Okay, this is uh, part two of my uh, roll center testing on the uh, MTC2. Uh, I'm going to try and keep this short because I know most people don't watch past 30 seconds. So here we go. Uh, so this is the results from uh, our timing system. So what I did was I used the uh, low roll center version, which was the uh, winner from last week's testing as the benchmark. And then I went to a medium high roll center and a high roll center. And what I did in switching between these guys is I maintained the same sort of camber gain numbers that this guy has. So I can show you quickly what that looks like. Uh, so here's the low roll center version. This is the stable, easy to drive, basically the EU uh, um, kit setup. Uh, so if you're just starting out, I would strongly recommend just starting with this setup because it works awesome. Uh, if you want to start getting a little faster, then you can go to uh, some setups with a little higher roll center. So this is what I call my mid-high or medium-high uh, setting. Uh, again, we've got three millimeters of shims on the lower suspension arm, and I took out the one millimeter of shim on the rear. Uh, what this does is it gets the front and rear roll centers closer together height-wise, um, normally with a four-wheel drive vehicle you'd want your front and rear roll centers fairly similar uh, so I thought I would give that a try uh, and then to get the camber gain numbers the same uh, use the upper arm uh, shimming to do that so I will show you a comparison here of the difference. <laughs> so you can see here, here's the roll center. The roll center is, uh, you know, three millimeters higher. Uh, there's less difference between the front and rear. Uh, all these parameters are pretty much the same. Roll couple, same. Uh, where we start getting some differences is in the chassis roll sensitivity, which this is the measure of uh, how stiff and how responsive the chassis is going to be. Um, the camber gain numbers you can see here, uh, I've attempted to get them as close as I could. So this setup here actually ended up being better than uh, the low roll center version. It was a little more difficult to drive, but uh, could still turn consistent lap times. And there's probably more in it if uh, I get into tuning some of the other things we can adjust. So this is the high version. So again, we have the three millimeter um, uh, shims under the inner arm. And then I went to 1.5 on the outer. So this ends up raising the roll center up even higher. Uh, again, use the top arms to get my camber gain numbers so that they were similar to what I had in the, in the low low roll center version. So you can see here camera gain numbers are pretty close. So in the end the medium high guy was the fastest. You can see the lap times here uh, a little bit better on fast lap. Uh, top 30 uh, half a tenth faster which is not insignificant. Uh, the high roll center version I just found it was just too edgy for me. Uh, I just couldn't get the lap time out of it because I was uh, uh, too nervous going into corners that it was going to traction roll on me or just uh, turn in too sharply. This version here really had some significant turn in. Uh, so it was definitely way better than this one or significantly better than this one. But again, more difficult to drive. So uh, that's it for this one. Probably what I'm going to try next is I'm going to take this whole high roll center version and we'll start playing with some shocks and springs and see if we can make uh, this guy a little bit more drivable and see what happens. So stay tuned.